Hello everyone, I'm Rajni Jha and you're watching the 8th part of subject and verb agreement. You can read about me from this slide. Um, if you like the video, do rate, review and recommend it. Also, you can follow me at an academy at this link. Now here's the rule number 10. This rule is about percent, fraction and indefinite quantity. Let me just explain these terms for you first. I'm sure you know about percent. Percent is basically a specified amount for every 100 and you can simply express it as a 20%, 30%, 90%, etc. Next is fraction. Fraction is a proportion of something. Fraction has two parts, a numerator and a denominator, like 1 by 3. 1 by 3 is a fraction, right? It can be written as 1 third. But if you want to write 2 by 3, you cannot write it as 2 third. The correct form will be 2 thirds. So while writing a fraction, keep in mind that if the first part, that is the numerator part, is more than 1, then you'll have to add s to the second part. Okay? So you can write fraction uh, like these, 1 third, 2 thirds and 3 fourths. Now questions have been asked from this part many a time in the comparative exam, so just keep this in mind. Next is indefinite quantity. Indefinite means vague, that is not clearly expressed or not exact. And uh, quantity means amount or number. So whenever you find a word which refers to amount or number, but it, uh, it doesn't really express how much or how many, that is an indefinite quantity. For example, uh, these are the indefinite quantities, some, many, much, majority, little, few, etc. If I say some books, that would mean that I'm talking about a number of books, but exactly how many that I don't know. Hence, it is an indefinite quantity. Okay, let's take, uh, take a look at the rule now. This rule says that if any sentence starts with percent, fraction or indefinite quantity and it is followed by of and then the or any possessive case, then the noun used after it would be the main subject. If this noun is singular, then the verb has to be singular. If this noun is plural, then the verb has to be plural. So long story short, if the sentence starts with a person, fraction or indefinite quantity, the noun after of, it's, it is going to determine whether the verb will be singular or plural and whether the other parts of speech are going to be singular or plural. Okay. Uh, let's just look at the sentences now. The first sentence is two thirds of the pole has or have rotten. The first thing you need to notice here is I have written two thirds, not two third. All right. Now I know that two thirds is a fraction and uh, I know the rule that uh, if a sentence starts with a fraction, then the noun after of is the main subject. So in the first sentence, pole is the main subject. And since pole is singular, I have to choose a singular verb. So I will choose has and the sentence will become two thirds of the pole has rotten. Next sentence, two thirds of the poles has or have rotten. Again, the sentence starts with a fraction. So I will uh, take into consideration the noun after of. So here the main subject will be poles, which is plural. So I'll have to choose a plural noun. And the sentence becomes two thirds of the poles have rotten. Now you can see these two sentences, these are somewhat similar. The only difference is um, that in the first sentence I have written pole and the second sentence I have written poles. But this actually changes the meaning entirely. In the first sentence, I'm talking about only one pole and two thirds uh, part of that one pole is rotten. But in the second sentence, there are many poles and uh, more than one pole is rotten over here, actually. Third sentence, some of the glasses has or have been broken. Now, some is an indefinite quantity. I already told you that. So, um, I have to take into consideration the noun used after of. So, here, the main subject would be glasses, which is plural. So I will choose a plural verb and uh, have will be my answer. So the correct sentence would become some of the glasses have been broken. Next, 30% of the study duration was or were spent on the follow up testing. Again, you can see the sentence starts with a percent. And I know that if a sentence starts with a person, fraction or indefinite quantity, then the noun after of is the main subject. So here the main subject is study duration and I know this is singular so I will choose a singular verb so I'm, I'm going to choose was and the correct sentence would become 30% of the study duration was spent on the follow-up testing. Next sentence 50% of this article is or are taken from statistical analysis. 
Now again, this sentence starts with person, so I will take into consideration the noun used after uh, the preposition of. So here the main subject is article, and since article is singular, I'll have to choose a singular verb. So I'm I'm gonna choose is, and the correct sentence would be, fifty percent of this article is taken from statistical analysis. Next. is about majority i've already told you majority uh, the word majority is actually indefinite quantity right but if in any sentence majority is used as a subject then you need to uh, remember that the word majority is singular so this sentence the first sentence is a majority is a part of the population containing more than 50% here you can see there's um, no such construction as of or the so here the main subject is majority and that is why i have used a singular verb but in the second sentence you can see that here the sentence starts with majority which is an indefinite quantity so here uh, and after that i have used of and um, i know that if a sentence starts with a uh, with an indefinite quantity the main subject is the noun used after of so in this sentence actually though it looks like majority is the subject this is not the subject the subject is voters which is plural so i have chosen have as an uh, as a correct option and the sentence becomes the majority of the voters have not cast votes now next rule is about here and there uh, you just need to remember that whenever a sentence starts with here and there it uh, the words here and there they act as dummy subject now dummy subject since it is a dummy subject not the means not uh, the main subject so this subject is not going to affect verb okay the main subject in sentences where the sentence starts with here and there is going to be the noun or pronoun which follows here or there now there are two different uh, construction if you want to use noun or a pronoun the construction of the sentence will be different if you want to use a noun in a sentence which starts with here and there you have to keep in mind that the noun uh will be used only after verb if you want to use a pronoun in a sentence which starts with here and there you have to keep in mind that after here and there you'll have to use a pronoun then only the verb can be used so in such sentence if you want to use a noun uh first first of all you have to use the verb but if you want to use a pronoun first of all the pronoun will be used then only you can use the verb okay now look, let's look at the sentences the first sentence is there was a were a king now you can see the sentence starts with there so i know this is a dummy subject and the main subject would be the noun after uh, there so here in the sentence the main subject is a king which is singular so i will choose a singular verb and the sentence becomes there was a king next here is or are my books again the sentence starts with there so i'm going to look uh, for any noun or pronoun which comes after here and here the noun my books is the main subject which is plural so i will choose are and the sentence becomes here are my books next here come or comes raghav again the sentence starts with here so this is not here is not the main subject uh, in this sentence the main subject is the noun raghav which is third person singular so i'll have to use a singular verb and that is why i have chosen comes and the sentence becomes here comes raghav there go or goes raghav again you can see there is not in this sentence um, this sentence starts with there so there is not the main subject raghav is the main subject raghav is third person singular so i'll choose a singular verb and therefore the sentence becomes there goes raghav next there she go or goes here the main subject would be the pronoun used after there so the main subject is she again this is third person singular so i will choose a singular verb and therefore i have chosen goes and the sentence becomes there she goes next here they come or comes here the main subject is they the pronoun used after here and since they is plural i'll have to choose a plural uh, verb so here i would choose come and the sentence becomes here they come last is there is or are many objections to this proposal again the sentence starts with uh, here or there so that means the noun after here or there would be the main subject so here the main subject is many objections which is plural so i have chosen are and the correct sentence is there are many objection objections to this proposal also you can see that in these sentences where i have uh, used a noun uh, before using a noun i have used the verb but in these sentences where i have used a pronoun before using the verb i have used pronoun which follows this construction again uh, do not forget to mention your queries or doubts in the comment section and uh, thank you very much for watching the video